the little double bot assist there. Much appreciated. All right, we're down to it's down to just me and you. And those that are coming in here wondering what the hell is going on. So what is going on, Mike? What are we? Who are we? What are we going to talk about? I I don't blame them. Uh, we're getting a tiny bit of a late start, but we just wanted to make sure we weren't stepping on any. Uh, anybody's toes here on the our cryptocurrency discord server but we are the crypto basic podcast we release a couple shows a week and we decided to start working with this discord server and uh, once a week at 11 a.m on tuesday at eastern time 11 we're going to come in and just talk about what happened this week we're going to go into the our cryptocurrency reddit and we're going to look at the top posts we're going to talk about what's going on the latest news and whatever else you guys want from the chat Normally, we don't talk about the prices at all. That's kind of like our thing. However, it was very clear from all of the top posts that talking about price is something that people want. We don't know, like, you know, what's happening or what or what's going on, but we're gonna mention it. Um, it we're going to we're gonna have some musings about it. But before we do, I did get a couple of the top stories on the subreddit for the week. So we're going to start with this one. This one is uplifting. This is a nice story. This is good. I don't know if it's bullish. I have no idea if it's going to affect the price. But Switzerland greenlights the world's first crypto ETF, which is actually called an ETP from them. And they have... Uh, it's launching in like a few days. And... Everything is real. It's not paper trading. So it's 100% backed. Everybody who buys a piece of this has a uh, triggers a, a buy and there's a custodian of the of the assets like in the fund. The coolest thing in my opinion, not even close is uh, that it's called HODL. And that's, oh, that's the ticker. That's the ticker. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, that is like they got the best ticker of all time and nobody else is going to be able to touch it. So um, apparently it's on like the fourth biggest ex stock exchange in Europe. Like if you said the fourth biggest stock exchange in the United States, I don't even know if like that would be a thing. So I don't know if it's yeah, like huge or what, but um, the here's, here's my, it, we always like try to grab our favorite comments because this person did a really good job summing everything up. But he, here's the interesting thing, Mike. Bitcoin, 47%, which makes sense. Their second holding is XRP at 30%. That's a lot of ripple. Oh, that is bad. That is a lot of XRP. Uh, they've, then they've got Ethereum down below that. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P <laughs> is their 3% uh, holding. And they've got Litecoin less than that. I think that's definitely a mistake. We shouldn't be holding any tickers that are six digits long. Uh, just as a rule um that is my expert analysis here um i here's the biggest here's the biggest thing that i that i've taken out of this first that the institutional investors have a positive view of ripple we may not but they do so that may matter uh also this kind of nobody wants to be first right like nobody wants to be the first one to legalize marijuana. We see that why, in the United like, why States. Why do you say that? Why why do you say people don't want to be the first? It, there's so many problems that can come with being first. So groups are resistant to be the first of things, especially on the governmental level. Um, that's why we keep seeing the ETFs in the United States get declined. But people also don't want to be last. So once there is a little bit of an inroad, and you saw that with uh, Colorado here in the United States. I think it was Colorado first, right? That um they got recreational yeah, vitamin C. I sure can't that. remember. But now there's a what ton of different do. states that have the ability to do uh, recreational marijuana, and I believe you'll see this kind of on a national level with ETFs. And um, that's <laughs> so it's kind of interesting. Um, we we've dabbled in the idea of creating the crypto basic ETF because in a lot of ways <laughs> it it's it allows you to basically say like. Uh, this is what, this is what we are betting on. But the problem is we're not allowed to give financial advice. And the problem is, you know, I'd want to only show that to people that are investing responsibly in, in very small amounts and in amounts they can afford to, to lose in crypto. And, and we both know that that's not very common, especially in our circles. So, 
Um, yeah, I, I like that they're getting to put their money where their mouth is. Yep. So anyway, that's that's an interesting little thing. Hoddle's the greatest ticker. And, you know, there, there's a lot of action in the chat that I have not been paying attention to. There's like posts of. Yeah, I, I saw that, but I was I was trying to follow up with the story and make sure I didn't miss anything. So um, we, we definitely need to catch up on the chat a little bit. Um, well, the, one of the things that was said in the chat, I think XVG has potential. Now XMR does have potential, but XVG, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I don't know what the potential is there, but um, you know, if anybody knows Justin, send him my way. I'm happy to have. Here, a, here's uh, here's what I think chat. the best case scenario for XRP is. I believe that they probably have a decent community of developers that have worked a while on the project, uh, but we have a lot of red flags as outsiders and as a, a media source because there's a lot of things that don't look good from an outsider's perspective and we've tried multiple times i've actually spoken to um i've actually offended somebody on this topic and 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 kept insisting they're welcome to you know have somebody come on our show and we want to interview them and we want to ask them the tough questions and in a respectful way we're happy to be wrong we would rather be wrong right but we do not see any evidence that suggests that verge is a good <laughs> idea as a whole elliot's here now everybody can calm down elliot <laughs> uh oh Qua so okay so quasi mentioned something just because we're a little light on content because of the because of the bear market quasi just mentioned something that's actually pretty cool if you have the delta app they push updates for the coins that you have in your portfolio and tell you like hey this this just happened with it well i think they probably charge the coins for that so if the coins have chosen to um to give you that information but he said he's been getting a lot of information from the iota team i noticed that iota uh, has made the coordinator open source and that is something we've been harping on them for not doing for a long time so that's that's interesting i mean it's still there it's still required to run the network but being open source is pretty cool and pretty important um and, and i want to i want to mention one thing while we're on iota one of the things that we often touch on is the egos involved with those with the foundation members of iota and how those guys kind of handle everything and I think that this situation with Craig Wright is exactly why we harp on that so often. When you have somebody who is willing to attack the crypto space as a whole or attack a coin as a whole for an ego-driven situation, you have a problem, especially if they can do that. Can the IOTA team members do that? I don't know. Can they attack that? I have no idea. But I know that they exhibit a lot of the same traits that um, Fake Toshi exhibits. So why aren't you guys talking about the biggest event in crypto in Q4 2018 SEC starting enforcement? I don't know about the SEC thing. Um, I haven't researched that. That's not something I want to talk. I want to just riff on off the cuff, but that could uh, that could probably have a non-zero effect on what is going on. All right, so uh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna move on to the to the second thing that I grabbed so far. And this yeah, is I, I was trying. There wasn't there wasn't a ton for me to work with. I'm looking through the chat here. There's some block folio. Spaceman mentioned. I have no idea what I'm doing here, Spaceman. If, if that's serious and you need help, feel free to mention in the chat. We'll be happy to help you out. We're we are crypto basic. We started this podcast for that reason. But uh Brent, what else did you find? So Ron Paul had a little uh poll on his page. You could you could have uh something for 10 years, couldn't touch it for 10 years. What do you want? Federal Reserve notes, gold, Bitcoin, or U.S. 10-year Treasury bonds. And Bitcoin was the clear winner at 49%. And this is being taken as like a big, all right, Bitcoin bull, woo. Actually, it was the winner at 50%. The end of the the end of the poll it went up a little bit more. I think if we had this poll today, that might be a little bit different. And I also yeah. think that this is not necessarily indicative of thoughts as a whole. Ron Paul is a libertarian. Uh, the libertarian ideals lend themselves to Bitcoin very heavily, and his voters are going to be extremely biased. So the 49% is probably, I mean, I don't know what it would be like if it was, un, you know, if it was uh, Kevin Hart posting it and and everybody was voting, they would, I, I very, I believe gold would probably win. 
just because the average person doesn't probably understand the difference between Federal Reserve notes, U.S. 10-year Treasury bonds, and Bitcoin. They would probably just pick gold because it looked the most, you know, comfortable. Right. Uh, so that, that that was the the Ron Paul thing. They started talking about Miley Cyrus in the chat. I never really... I, I didn't pick my favorite one. I just remember somebody talking about Miley Cyrus, and I don't know what she had to do with <laughs> with with Bitcoin. <laughs> um, yeah, it, yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, this is very biased, and in fact, like the fact that it's only fifty percent Bitcoin says kind of a lot, right? Like, I would imagine that this classification of people that follow Ron Paul on Twitter, this like has to be the most like high percentage of large group of individuals that are actually interested in Bitcoin. So yeah, I mean, it's not uh, going to be as large as like the people who follow Vitalik or something like that, but it is going to, as far as like, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know how many followers Ron Paul has, like how many people actually on, uh, at the end it had 95,000 votes. I don't know how many followers he has, but right. So I, I don't know. Could Vitalik get 95,000 votes on a tweet? I doubt it. That sounds like way above his pay grade, even just as far as notoriety and, and popularity. Certainly, uh, there certainly the percentage would be higher for Vitalik. No doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure that this is, uh, this is bullish news. But I don't know if anything is bullish news, so it doesn't really Here's matter. Thing. No, 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 no. I, I like this because it it just puts the concept out there in front of people more often, right? Like there are people that just scrolled past this, read it, voted for other things, but they saw that the results, hey, people were more interested in Bitcoin than U.S. bonds. Huh. That's interesting. You know, maybe they, all of these like subtle things. This is why mass adoption takes a long time because you don't get somebody into crypto the first 20 times they hear about Bitcoin, right? Like it's the, it's once they've heard about Bitcoin for a long time and all the news becomes really positive. You know, that's what happened to us. You know, I, I found out about this in like 2015. I watched it for about two years before I decided to get in. And then now I'm, you know, part of this community and we, there's a lot of those seeds that have been planted. And unfortunately, I think it's going to take a long time for a lot of those seeds to sprout into something relevant inside this community. But eventually, if we put it in front of enough people, that's what we're going to use to, uh, you know, attract this following and eventually grow this network. Yeah. And here's so I think it's time to to, to just have a little fireside chat, Mike, about what's bullish and bearish and what's going on here. I want to show a little chart. This is the chart about whether John McAfee is going to have to cut off his dick. Um, Do you actually want me to open this? <laughs> it, we are not anywhere near uh, the prediction that we need to be at to get to put McAfee's dick in the safe zone. Uh, today it should be around 23,000 and it's at 4,700 and falling, you know, he's, he's well off his target number. I don't know what's going to happen with poor McAfee. Here's no, the I thing, man, like, like, <laughs> does he actually just like cut his dick off on camera? I feel like he's crazy enough One to do time. it that way, right? Like if he's gonna do it, he has to do it like that, right? He's he can't just—I just... believe he's just gonna fucking do it, right? Like he—he's just crazy enough that he thinks that all the conspiracy did, that all the all the uh, cooperation, all the collusion against him worked, and it and they somehow kept down this great Bitcoin thing, right? That's he might just cut his dick off for that. Who knows? Yeah, I, I hope so. I really hope he does. But this is just a daily reminder that that's out there and that's a possibility and it could happen. So I'd like to share uh, another chart that has nothing to do with Mr. No, no, we, wait, 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 we, we can't, hold on. This is a very relevant uh, chat mention here. Um, I, I can't read this person's name, Viologica or something. Uh, apparently this person's claiming that McAfee said it would be Bitcoin cash. That would be that amount, not Bitcoin. What? I don't know how, I don't know how accurate that is. Wow. So you know, he's I really, the, I don't know what the larger picture is. Maybe maybe there's more to that conversation that you know if you take a a helicopter view the whole conversation was about bitcoin cash instead of bitcoin who knows wow what an out what a what, what an angle shot there 
to get out well, of Well, yeah, because he gets both, right? That's it's coverage, it's board coverage. He he gets to cover a larger percentage of the field by having a way to include both. <laughs> yeah, no, we definitely don't need SVP, to read too much. Unfortunately, McAfee we says. completely agree. Uh, we don't read too much anything McAfee says. However, uh, there's that like little part of us that likes TMZ as well. And McAfee's all we got, really. So we got to hold on to it for as long as we can. And we openly admit we do not think he's the same person, but he's entertaining. And, you know, I, I believe I just hope he doesn't harm people in the process. And I hope he keeps entertaining. But yes. All right, Mike, I've got a fun little game for you. I like games. I'm going to put a chart in the chat. It's oh, going to be blank. I want you to tell All me right. what this chart is representing. It's a six-month chart. Uh, this represents that things were were not looking that bad things were going okay and then ah oh, man not not as good as they were what's <laughs> what, going on does, what does anyone else think this represent like what uh what uh project or group of projects or yeah there, there you go shanto winner if there was a fake cr currency i could tip you in i would this is the 6 month nasdaq picture <clears throat> so look there is not a positive correlation, but it's not it's not negative either with the uh, overall markets and cryptocurrency. Obviously, it's a much smaller percentage overall, but it's also a much less volatile asset. The, the markets are down in the United States. I don't know what the other ones looked at. This is the only one that I looked up to see what was going on. I'm sure there are people way smarter than me that have found more correlation, less correlation, or what have you, but we are. I don't think we're in a spot where the reverse correlation is ready to go yet. The negative correlation is not there, and I don't think it's going to be there until the next time we have a we have one of the same. You know what I mean? Like the the quantitative easing, the the bailouts, the the dumb shit that happened in two thousand eight. When it comes back again, uh. That is when we're. That's when we're going to see people be sick of it, and that's when we might see a negative correlation. I think right now this is just people who are investing, and when they're moving their money around from investments, whatever. There's a lot to it. I mean, Craig and um, and uh, the other guy, uh, the Bitmain guy, um, are selling Gian? their yes, uh, Jian Wu. They're selling their shit, so I'm sure that has something to do with it. But I we. In the end, so actually, Brian, like, look, I, I gotta stop you real quick because the one thing that I want to say is that we will publicly admit that we don't want your, you don't want, we don't want you to be all crypto. We don't want you to be all in here, right? So maybe there's a lot of factors here. If the markets are down and a lot of people's portfolios, they want to be, you know, 80 to 90 percent stocks and bonds then you know maybe you need to remove some of your crypto maybe that's some people's strategies like that seems very viable right this is a speculative part of your portfolio it should be a small part of your portfolio you know there's going to be fluctuations on both sides and i don't see that changing anytime soon <clears throat> so you know that's why we recommend just just being responsible with your investments keep it small keep it responsible and you know get in over time just worry about it down the road yeah, and Crisis said, I'm 100% all in on crypto. Look, so are we, but that doesn't mean it's right. Like, that's stupid. We shouldn't be doing that. So, <laughs> uh, you know. Here's the thing. All right, so bankroll management is something that we could have a, a long conversation on. And, you know, part of it is that we are calculated risk takers. That's how we got into crypto. We The allure of the swings is what excited us because we're used to that. We are poker players. We played poker for a dozen years or more, semi-professionally, professionally, however you want to classify it. And the fact remains that we are, we are used to having large daily swings. So, that doesn't mean that we go in and be irresponsible with poker. We certainly have been, but like we understand that, okay, when you want to take something serious that involves investing, there's lots of people's money on the line. So that means other people are going to take it very seriously at some point, right? You got to, you got to play responsible. You got to play mature and you got to make the most correct decisions you can. 
And what we have found is that people make very irrational decisions when they're in high risk scenarios. That is why it's possible to be a professional poker player. It's why it's possible to the for, for the casino to have a 30% take on blackjack when there's only a 1% house edge. Um, that people will will make irrational decisions. They'll look for patterns where patterns don't exist. They'll think, man, I lose every time I get all in with this dealer. Or, oh man, every time I hit a 16, I bust. So I'm never going to hit a 16. You know, they're, the world as a whole will make irrational decisions when money is on the line. So is is it rational to continue to hold? Maybe. Is it irrational to continue to hold? Maybe. Is it rational to dump all of your crypto? Maybe. Is it irrational to dump it? Maybe. I actually don't know what the rational decision is. I know what I think the rational decision is. I might be the irrational one. I have no idea. But the we're the willing price. to be wrong. That's why we we choose to act the way that we do in this market. Right. So the the time the time horizon is a really important thing to think about here. When you're when we invest in crypto, it's like, all right, well, I'm putting this into crypto and I'm not touching it for five years. So I hope the price is up in five years. That'd be sweet. You know, so the it we I still don't know if it's overpriced. Like I don't know how so, to value this asset. Right. And and here's something I'm gonna say. So crisis, you're mentioning something in this chat here. You're basically saying you're a student. So even if you lose some money, you're not gonna care because you're young and you have time to make it up. So I used to think exactly like you, and I'm going to go, I'm going to give you a little bit of a dad speech here and, and <laughs> I apologize in advance. Okay. But here's the thing. You have your entire day is, is an investment, right? Every day that you wake up, you get to invest. You get to spend your time in certain ways because you are hoping that, you know, maybe you're in school. You, that's what you said. So you spend your time in class, you are investing in yourself, your business of Mr. Crisis, whoever you are, you're spending your time and resources well, based on in yourself picture, this is for Carlos future Matos. expectations. So when you are young and let's say, I don't know, I don't know what a young person throws around money. Let's pretend it's 20 bucks a week in, if you put 20 bucks a week in something that you're just throwing away because let's say it's beer, right? Let's say you put your beer money into crypto instead and then 20 years from now what do you think that looks like right because the money that you invest when you're young has the most opportunity for returns you have maybe 40 years before retirement i mean maybe earlier than that but like every dollar you invest has so much more opportunity for compounding returns that I i've quickly learned that it's very irresponsible just to think that you can make it up later yeah, that didn't stop me. I mean, I knew that, but, but you know, sometimes, you know, I also know I shouldn't be eating a whole pizza by myself and that doesn't stop me. Because, because the, the consequences aren't important to you, right? Well, I mean, maybe <laughs> the, the consequences may eventually be important to me, uh, but, and then, then maybe you'll have to change, right? Maybe, maybe you have uh, another health scare and then, you, you know, you finally look in the mirror one day and decide that this isn't you know, the way you want to live your life anymore. And, and that's what it took for me. Right. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's easy because it's not, I still have a ton of a long way to go, but when something becomes important to you, then it's significantly easier to change your mindset on it. Yeah. All right. So Shanto asked, where would you invest your fiat gain from crypto to generate passive income these days? Um, it, so here's what I wouldn't do. I would not, read the four hour work week and think that that was what I was going to do. Um, you know, the, the, it's a very entertaining book, but, uh, to, it, the Tim Ferriss method of generating passive income really works if you're Tim Ferriss or if you're Ty Lopez, but it doesn't necessarily work if you're all the people that are following them. Um, what, you know, what I, ha what I have done personally for passive income is I, I look for ways to get percentages of products. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fat dude. I've had a percentage of a, of a CrossFit gym. I, I currently have a percentage of a, an escape room. Use your skills and your abilities to generate percentages of businesses, whether those are online brick and mortar or something else, but don't, uh, rent a bunch of Lambos and then try to sell people courses on how to make millions of dollars. Don't do that. 
and you know that works for a couple of people. I, I think the days of <laughs> the days of that mm-hmm. are, are long gone. SGP makes a very good point. The that the number one thing you should be doing is uh, is Roth IRA, and that's that's factually correct. A and that's fifty five hundred a year. If yeah, I that's correctly. a fifty yeah. so, or maybe sixty five. Oh no, it's sixty five year older. So yeah, it's fifty five five thousand and change per year that you can put in there and. You don't have to pay taxes on the capital gains when you pull it out, as long as you wait right. long enough. Right. So essentially, no, none of us should own crypto unless we're over our fifty-five hundred a year in our Roth IRA. If we're being properly bankrolled, responsible. Yes. Um, so, you know, in order of like things, if you want to be like crypto responsible, <laughs> whatever the your employer's matching in a four hundred one k, do that whatever you put the max into your ira every year and then if you've got anything extra if you go by charlie lee's advice it's make sure you own one full bitcoin before you own any other alts Ooh, we have another we have a chart game here what is this Ooh. i don't know what is this a chart of or, or should we be guessing oh the oxfam novib micro credit fund i don't is micro credit like the like the dave app and like the other um the other ones where they're like i needed a hundred dollars till payday and i got it via dave app swipe up on snapchat is that what that is uh micro i mean that seems like micro credit right i mean micro credits i guess maybe is a different thing um micro credits um, the third world all right hmm. yeah i don't know Here's what I here's what I would love. I, I would love to be able to. I, I think they were talking about this. At one of the altcoins Pete was mentioning to us. Um, I wish we could just create a portfolio and like let people invest like a dollar a week into it or something. And like that's what that's what I would love to do. Just have something that people could that I could say. You know what? This Binance coin. I think it's I think it's going to be here a little while. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, all these coins are going to be here a little while. This is this is a very sobering time. And I can understand how somebody could see their portfolio go from hundred thousand dollars at the beginning of this year to to a thousand, and be really upset and thinking, "Wow, how I should have cashed out! I should have cashed out." Um, if you were gambling, if you were just trying to ride the waves and hit the prices and up and down, in and out of tether and all that stuff, uh, then okay, this is very bad for you. But if you believed in the tech and you were willing to pay a certain amount of money for that tech with the available information, then as long as nothing's changed about your, about your original evaluation, you should ideally be cool with paying the current prices. Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of people will say buy the dip and, you know, a lot of people, I think they mention that just because it's the emotional response, right? Like, they they believe they're not willing to be wrong, so they they have to assume that they're right, and they're like buy the dip. But as long as you're objective with yourself, and you're saying, well, it's true. I've made a decision that currently was less correct than I thought it would be. At, you know, in short term, you know, do I want to double down on this? Maybe you know. There, there, sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes you don't care about price. Sometimes you're you're just going to, you know, put in a little bit of money here and there and whatever happens happens, but you know, time in the market is better than timing the market. If this is something you believe in, you know, have an, have enough bitcoin in your portfolio that, you know, alts can't crash you, but I think this space is strong and, you know, I I recommend hanging on. I know it's hard to it's hard to even say it sometimes. I don't I don't like it myself, but you know, if you're in this for the long term, like I am, like I'm, I'm thinking 2030, right? I'm not even thinking 2020, 2030 is when I'm thinking like what the space is going to be like. And if you can do that and, and things even go remotely the way that I want them to in the next 12 years, then, you know, I'm only 33 years old, 12 years. That, that makes me 45. I'm, I'm okay waiting 12 years for this to become relevant, right? As long as it becomes relevant the way that we think it can. Yeah. Um, yeah, do- Obviously, don't invest money you need for daily life. That is actual. That is also true. I, anyway, it's just a. I, I, we hate talking about price because one, we're not. We, we don't know how to read a chart. We don't know how to look for all the reverse Bart Simpson dead cat um, situations. So, 
so, so can we comment on whether that actually works or not? No, it doesn't appear to work because if it did, then like if there was a way to make it work, then wouldn't everybody make it work and then it wouldn't work. So that kind of thing. But we understand metagame. We know there's rock, paper, scissors and everything like that. So, but we just don't know. We don't know enough to, to know what's going on with that. Here's what I do know. Tether is having a hard time. Let's, you know what? Let's do a, <laughs> let's do a little stable coin roundup. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how they're because the theory is that Tether or other stable coins should go up when the market is tanking, right? Well, Tether, um, oh, oh, Tether is up to a dollar one cent right now, according to Live Coin Watch. It was down at like ninety seven cents earlier today. Uh, let, but let's let's it's at a dollar one. Let's see what the other stable coins are doing. True USD is at a dollar six cents. Wow. Uh, Bitcoin Diamond is also at a dollar six cents. I don't think that's a stable coin. <laughs> I think that's just a shit fork. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and I know there's USDC, which I haven't found. USDC is a dollar three. That you uh, also better than Tether. So what about um, what about the the die? USDC is up to up to thirty eight in market cap. weren't we we were very recently saying how how long that was going to be for that to reach where Tether is. They're up to one hundred and forty seven million. And what is how much is Tether? Wow, even the Dai, which is a decentralized stablecoin, <clears throat> is is trading at a dollar and one cent, almost no, a dollar and two cents. And that that one has been very very stable on <clears throat> on the dollar. So very very interesting. It's very clear that the market has less confidence in Tether than any of the other stablecoins, but yet Tether still has the highest market cap. It still has the the biggest support from the exchanges. They really need to fix that. Um, so, yeah, Tether Tether has the pairs in the volume. That's on the exchanges. If the exchanges said tomorrow we're getting rid of all the Tether and we're getting rid of and we're adding all the <laughs> all the USDC, we'll also convert it one to one USDC to Tether. Like it'd be fine, but they're not willing to do that because they know Tether doesn't have the money. I know we were talking. To, um, we were talking about now. We mentioned the stable coins or whatever, and I don't know. I just I'm curious on your thoughts on this, Brent. Just how this compares to some of the other things. Uh, we talked about Nexo on the podcast, and they've released that they're allowing li liquidity partners. So basically, for the loan system that this platform has, that it's a crypto asset backed loans. Uh, you know, you can take the USDC and deposit it I and mean, deposit stable coins on here. And they're giving you 6.5% annual interest on that um, as a stable coin investment in the crypto space. To me, that seems like a really interesting opportunity. I, I don't know how that compares to some of the other. The bear um, market has options. to be good for the loan, the loaning platforms, right? Like they, they get to liquidate your assets when they fall too far and get a massive percentage on them. So like the like the die for instance is they they I can't remember what I think it was a 13% liquidation penalty or something and that yeah so and obviously that's not a person but that's the protocol itself <clears throat> getting a getting a penalty that they can distribute to the maker uh to the maker token holders and the nexo token so nexo token holders even though the nexo token's probably tanking like you in theory should be getting that dividend that they're paying out and we'll see if they we'll see if they do that but um the uh, as a European doing e eg Ethereum Euro is crappy. I don't. I'm, I'm not familiar with European um, token economics or Euro pairs. Oh, oh, they have. Yeah, Euro pairs have low volume. Okay, that makes sense. The um, you need to be on like Kraken or something like that to try and get some reasonable volume for a for a Euro pair. That makes it, it also must suck to have USD pairs as primary pairs on something like Bitfinex because US investors can't even use it and it's still the primary pair that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me but that's a, that's it so yeah that was that was really you know look there was as we were scrolling through our cryptocurrency today to, to see the stuff there was a lot of negativity the subreddit is 99% clickbait articles the subreddit has taken a major step back the tribalism is a big problem uh, the market's red. It was all like negative, and we were trying to to kind of bring this back and make it make it reasonable. So, um, you know, what's what's on the horizon that's going to moon the price? I have, 
Who knows? Who knows? Definitely, you know, maybe if you thought you were a trader, get a job and and stop trying to make money on trading. Um, it, what does this have to do with Craig Wright? <sighs> Jesus. So, so we, we just did a little basic blitz on the show and we were talking about what's happening with Bitcoin and or Bitcoin cash. We didn't really understand it. So we had somebody on the show that did understand it. Uh, sometimes he's in the chat. I don't know if he's here right now. Uh, no. where, where are you reading about Craig Wright? No, I, I, look, he's on everybody's mind because of what's happening. Oh. Like they're, they're kind of, it, it sounded like you're reading that out of the chat. And no, 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 no. It's, it's I just, was wondering if we were in a, if I was in the wrong place. No, I was scrolling through coin market cap, seeing a bunch of, or not, not, not I'm sorry. Uh, our cryptocurrency, seeing a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. and Craig Wright popped up. Yeah, so. yeah, gotcha. so what he's doing is very bad for, for Bitcoin cash overall. He's, he said he's going to run that coin into the ground with no replay protection on his big BCH SV chain. So despite the fact that he lost the hash war at the moment, the even though the exchanges are awarding the BCH ticker to BCH ABC, he is he he is still going to continue to make the chain unstable. And they're getting a lot of assistance and hash power from the Bitcoin community right now. So once that assistant dis assistance disappears, Craig may, you know, Craig may, <laughs> Craig believes he's Satoshi and that uh, both Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash ABC are flawed and must be destroyed. And yeah, I mean, he's, he's insane. Well, the, you know what? Like Vitalik said, if, if Craig is Satoshi, it would change his opinion of Satoshi more than it would change his opinion of Craig. Craig is not Satoshi. He he still say you know he still hasn't proven it. If he wanted, he keeps telling people he is, but he's the kind of you guy who would prove you know it if he could. I I I get so conflicted on this conversation because of Calvin being involved, and like I keep thinking back to like that guy's reputation. He's likely bankrolling a lot of this situation. Um, Calvin knows something that the rest of the world doesn't, right? And and I mentioned this, um, the Brian Mycon interview when they were talking about this subject. And in a game theory perspective, it makes a ton of sense for there to be really complicated information that neither can reveal about each other involving Roger Ver, Craig Wright, and possibly Calvin as well. Like, what do these guys know about each other that the others don't? Like, it, it almost is starting to make sense that maybe Craig really is Satoshi and he's just crazy enough to not know how to explain it or something. Like, there's no, so no many way. He can send a transaction. Situations. Unless he lost the private keys. Like, the, he can, <laughs> sending, sending a transaction for one Satoshi would be enough to prove who he is. So... It, it's the easiest thing in the world. It he wouldn't want the uncertainty. Like we understand, he had so much of an ego that he walked out of a conference room, yelling at the people, saying, "You want me or you want this motherfucker here? Huh? What you want? You want me or you want this guy? All right, I'm leaving if nobody says they want me." And then he leaves. Uh, okay, but like, how socially awkward does somebody have to be to like to be this anonymous fucking god to the crypto world? Like, I don't know. Like, and then changing his mind at some point. Like, I, I don't know. It's it's such a wild story. I don't want to believe it. I, I think Craig Wright is toxic. I don't. None of nothing I am saying is positive or intending to be positive. But I don't understand. Like, like there's so many big players involved. The only there's way he could be he could actually be Satoshi is if he intentionally destroyed the private keys in the beginning so that he could never access the the, the Bitcoin that he mined. As he had Satoshi. his own ceremony to like, yeah. and then now he feels super stupid. Yeah, but it's not like he said that. So it's it's so how uh, much how much Bitcoin? So let's let's hypothetically think of something here. Let's pretend a lot of this Bitcoin is locked up. Do we have an estimation of how much it is? Uh, I I know Satoshi has a lot. I don't I don't remember how much it is, but there's a lot in those wallets. Um, if oh those yeah, he could log on entered... to Bitcoin Talk. There's a Satoshi account on there. Yeah, of course. Um, All right, so one million of the Bitcoin. If they never leave that wallet. Functionally, that makes all the other Bitcoin like more scarce and more valuable, right? Like that's kind of how it works. Yes, that's interesting. It's five percent of the total supply that'll ever be. Yeah, and then we're we're still five million away from the total supply being released, right? Or or we're probably like seventeen or eighteen million, something like that. Yeah, but look, the the end result is that the percentage chance that um 
that Satoshi is Craig is damn near zero. He would have to be really weird and really insane to want to claim to be Satoshi, but also at the same time not do anything to prove it so that, like, everybody would constantly make fun of him. Like, who would do that? you got to be a real special kind of crazy. So if you say to me, you know, Nick Szabo is Satoshi, like, okay, I don't like the fact that he's constantly posting, like, pro-Trump shit, but I, I have way more of an ability to believe it because he's always said he's not. And if people think that he is and he says that he's not, that's more likely than saying that you are and being unwilling to prove it. So right, I agree with that. any one person that is on the list of possible Satoshis is a greater chance of being Satoshi than Craig Wright, even if it's not a very big chance overall. Actually, the best possible thing ever would be for Satoshi to go on to Bitcoin Talk and just say, Craig Wright is not me. <laughs> That's all he needs to do. That would be so amazing. Craig would spin that into it being him, though. He'd be like, okay, so see, the not me part, I added that just to really confuse everybody. But my name is Craig Wright, so, so you know, you know. Maybe, maybe like, he'll put the S in there and then, like, do some sort of weird hash that, that like, says i don't know i i anyway i'm sorry that we're talking about craig Wright. he is certainly non-zero responsible for what is happening in the market as is the nasdaq as is our president as is the global situation brexit everything is involved in all of the markets and there is everyone wants everyone wants a specific person thing to blame they want to say this is because of fucking craig god damn it or this is because of Roger not working with Craig. But by, by the way, how great does this make Roger look? A guy that we that I also don't have much respect for looks like a fucking gem comparatively. <laughs> He's a, in I I haven't watched much more than uh, what I did leading up to our, our recent recording with Brant, but the things that I did watch surprised me. Like I I saw either somebody that's being coached to be more mature on camera or somebody that's trying to be more mature. I like one of the two, right? Mm. Yep. Uh, this is definitely making Roger look good. Maybe that was the intention. <laughs> Maybe they're still working together and they're like, all right, we're just going to do this thing and we're going to make me look good. We're going to accumulate a bunch of Bitcoin. Let's we can tinfoil hat all all day. Right. Like I, like the type of tinfoil hat, capacity for these two individuals are so far beyond mine and mine is pretty high right like i stop you all the time and just try to like run ridiculous situations by you <laughs> that you brush off pretty often but like that's the fun of it for me like i like playing the what if game and i'm really good at it these guys have to be they have to be so much better than me that i have no idea how good they are right like they have to be so their brains just work on another level that mine doesn't comprehend. And the, the types of war games that they're going to play with each other because the stakes are so high. I, I don't know. I mean, we, we talked about um, the game theory aspect with the game chicken, the um, uh, what's the poker guy, um, David Sklansky, where if you're playing a game of chicken, where you're driving a car against each other, his suggestion was he's going to rip the steering wheel out and throw it out the window. And then it's up to the other person that whether we die or whether you live, so you take the choice out of your own hands. It's almost like one of them's trying to take the choice out of their hands, right? Like I, Craig's like, I'm going to burn us all or, or some, well, I don't know. he could, he could stop. That's so the game theory thing that he's working with here is he made an ultimatum that said, if you don't go with my chain, I am going to fuck with Bitcoin cash until I'm out of money. And, and so the Bitcoin Cash ABC community had to decide, is he serious or is he just going to do it for a little while and then give up? And they clearly decided he's not serious. We're not going with this dude. Or they do like, you know, what my my personal favorite is, if anybody ever gives you an ultimatum, you tell them to fuck off. That way, nobody can give you an ultimatum because they automatically know you're just going to tell them to fuck off. So, but Craig said, I'm going to do this. And it, it's... If somebody says that, you have to weigh whether it's so damaging to their reputation that they're required to continue to do it. So it Craig's reputation is pretty bad, so I don't think he has any integrity requirement to continue to fuck with Bitcoin Cash. Um, you know, I, I hope he stops. I, I hope this ends. So let's let's remove ABC and SV from the equation, right? Let's 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 think above Bitcoin Cash. Like is there ulterior motives that 
could involve like outside like just bitcoin itself maybe like do you think um <laughs> how orchestrated of a massive dump could this be right if we want to talk about conspiracies what if calvin <laughs> just wants to buy a like a billion dollars worth of bitcoin over the counter or something and he's just trying to get it on sale and he's like well i could spend like a few million for a month just like torturing bitcoin cash and like wrestling it to the ground and taking the market with it i i don't know that's like super crazy conspiracy but maybe yeah well, yeah the end result like is we have no idea it. those are complete tinfoil hats all right so th this was a also a completely out of character session for us we don't normally go on about these like conspiracies and prices and craig right uh, we're giving the people what they want i hope yeah yeah th we we knew we realized today was a little bit unique and we wanted to and, and we wanted to just kind of talk about the unique deal of the martin day. we won't yeah martin name martin we are we are completely done talking about satoshi all right i apologize if we do i'm gonna make it a point i, I wrote it on my notepad no no C. douche got it okay so since we've only got a few minutes left and we really don't have any other any, anything else that we brought to the table i would love to respond to some of this this has been like the, uh some of the most active chat that we've had so if anybody wants to pick our brains um i'm going to be in thailand with kareem in about a week we're going to the beyond blocks conference where we're going to be moderating some panels that include people such as charles hoskinson so if you had uh anything you wanted to to glean oh, yeah, from I a conference we, we can bring we it back found that out after after we were on here yeah right? we Last were week, so we got bombarded with awesome news of uh it's brent and cream are going to thailand to interview a bunch of guys and it's it all just is a result of the podcast and and meeting people in this community and you know certainly our cryptocurrency is a big part of that and reddit and we're very thankful for what this community is becoming and that's why we're focusing on the community right now because that's the part that we can do to grow this space right we're going to connect the people together we're going to be skeptics we're going to help provide some um some mostly unbiased biased you know research and we're just going to try to make the space better all right we got a question from martin he asked will erc20 survive the sec i'm not 100 percent up I, I realize somebody posted a link which i will read but erc20 is if the sec has rules against the erc20 will they survive yes because it doesn't matter if the sec has rules against it uh, the only the companies that are based in the U.S. are going to have a problem with that. So if there is a, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, SGP. I, I was speaking at another conference where um, uh, one of the Monero de developers that goes by Sarang mm -hmm. went on right before me and just crushed it. And I had planned on talking about Monero, so it was like really bad. Um, anyway, back to the RC20. You, you had basically, you had to emergency, like, cut that section out because you look so stupid compared to him, right? Yeah, well, he said all the same things I was going to say, too. And they made me and cut out smarter. the Pornhub slide anyway, so it was like, I had the Pornhub logo and they didn't like that. All right, so, yeah, ERC20 will survive if it's a if it's a U.S.-based company that is working off of an ICO that they raised the RC20. They may not survive, but ethereum can be shut down by 50 different countries and it still survives is the price gonna suck maybe but it still works as long as you can still mine it as long as you still have the freedom to do what you want with your computer with your electricity with all of that stuff like the networks continue on this isn't uh you know ethereum is not a centralized network they're they're partially centralized but there isn't any like if the ethereum uh if the ethereum foundation gets shut down they're Ethereum's still fine. It exists. So, uh, so yeah, ERC-20 won't be good for price, but it will certainly be good for, um, or it, it, like, SEC won't be good for the price, but ERC-20 will certainly survive. Uh, Bitcoin Lightning Network progress. I haven't looked at that in a while, but the more Lightning Network, obviously, the better it gets. This, that's, that's one of the, that's one of the things. Now, there's, there's issues with the thoughts behind centralization and Bitmain being the boogeyman at the end of the at the end of the rainbow. But as we saw very quickly, Bitcoin Cash was not the answer because somebody had another, you know, original vision versus not original vision debate on the original vision coin, and now it's having a shit show. So I said right. somebody, not a specific person. I did not violate the rules, but you know, the the 
the Lightning Network is making things a lot better. Uh, but there's still backup. I mean, we're backed up right now with Bitcoin transaction. Ooh, oh, oh, okay. So we're we're past. I love them both. No, no, you know, I hate people who check sets to the river, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because oh, to the river, yeah. yeah no, here's what it is. Every time when people check sets to the river, it's always on high hand days where like <laughs> the high hands pay out millions of dollars or whatever thousands. So it's like two thousand dollar high hands. So they're trying to hit their quads. But in no scenario would they ever check all three streets otherwise because they'd be so scared to lose with their hand. So I do stupid shit and, like, make bets on rivers. And I'm like, well, they can't ever have a set here. And then I, like, make a bet. And then they just call and they have a set. And I'm like, what the hell? And I remember it's high hand day. So I didn't factor that into my decision. <laughs> so that's... Uh, crisis, it's a complicated question. Um, mostly. I mean, like, I we don't do it full time anymore. Um, mostly part time. We met in... A, we worked in a casino together in 2009. That's how we all met, Kareem, Brent, and I, and uh, we've been really good friends ever since. Well, I've known Brent longer than that, but that's yeah, when yeah. I met Kareem. That's when that's when sixteen year old Kareem joined the mix. Yeah, sixteen year old Kareem met like twenty one year old Mike, and we uh, we were working in a casino and poke rooms and uh, played professionally for a while. The highest portion of my income is not from poker anymore. All right. Well, uh, you want to sign us off while I go fuck with my dog? Yeah, I, I actually do need to get going. I, I'll just I'll just wrap it up by saying uh, crypto replaced the playing side of my life for the most part, but um, poker will always be a part of my life, and I think it's a a really complicated but great game once you've learned it. But anyways, that, that was Mike. Or that was the Crypto Basic Podcast. Uh, I was Mike. I was here with Brent. Unfortunately, his dog is barking right now, so he's not going to be able to sign off with us. But thank you guys for stopping by. We appreciate this. I believe we're going to post this to YouTube. And uh, thanks again for all your inter interactions. Later, guys. Thanks for stopping by. See ya. Later. All right. Bye, guys. Sorry. Dog went crazy, but I'm out.